Hey guys, so it is the next day and before we go back out into the garage to work on the Corolla, we're going to make a quick pit stop at the first 2019 Exotic Cars and Coffee. So a BMW dealership that's local to my area has started this kind of Exotic Cars and Coffee and the last one that I went to last year was pretty cool. So we're going to swing by there, see if there's some cool cars, maybe make a little one to two minutes short of the event if there's enough stuff there to uh, videotape. But uh, anyway, after that we'll head back to the house, we'll hop back onto the Corolla. We still have a lot of stuff to do and at the end of this video or closer towards the end of this video, we're going to do a pretty big unboxing. So I've got a lot of parts that I want to unbox and show you all uh, and it's all going to be for the 4 AGE 16 valve swap. So uh, guys stay tuned for that and I will see you all at the Exotic Cars and Coffee.
Hey guys, so I ran out of daylight yesterday and I just got home from work and I'm back out here in the garage to finish all of this up. I am at a pretty good point, so uh, we're very close to being ready to pull the engine. I just have to do a couple more things, so let me show you a little bit more in depth of what I've gotten done so far and what is still left to do. Alright, so it looks kind of like a mess, but uh, it is definitely progress. So obviously the first thing you see is I've removed the radiator, drained the radiator, all that's gone and all the hoses are disconnected. The power steering pump has been removed and is off to the side, it is off of the engine. Man, this engine is super grimy. I didn't realize how, I guess, leaky it was, but anyway, the power steering pump has been removed. All of the emission control stuff that's over here has been removed and unplugged. Back here, we have the AC lines. They have been removed. I know a lot of people probably think that's not a very good thing to do, uh, but there's all the AC components over there. This thing never had AC as long as I've owned it, and I'm pretty sure there was, I mean, I know there was no fluid in there because nothing leaked out when I took the hoses off. It was totally dry. So I think that's okay to go ahead and do that. Uh, I removed the, I think this is like the heater bypass or something like that, that was removed from there. Um, I've unplugged all of the fuel lines that run to the fuel pump. Now, if I remember correctly, this is actually a mechanical fuel pump in the 4AC, so the uh, the pump is actually actuated off of the cam, I think, or something like that. So that's not going to work for my application, so I still have to kind of figure out what I'm going to do about fuel, uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. Over here, uh, removed, I think the charcoal canister was here or something like that. Uh, disconnected all the electrical wires and all that kind of stuff. So I still need to remove this grounding cable here. I still got to take this vacuum line off, but it's kind of like dry rotted on there, so it's kind of hard to get off. And then also the uh, throttle cable I still need to remove, uh, which should be pretty simple. Just undo those nuts there and that should pop right off. Oh yeah, and then also the exhaust has been completely uh, undone. It hasn't been removed because I'm kind of having some difficulty getting it off, but it's totally loose. You can see the gap right there. Uh, those bolts are totally off, so that's cool. Obviously, the battery's not in there at the moment. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for up top that needs to be removed. And of course, the things that I still need to do. So obviously, the motor mounts are still attached to the engine. The transmission mount is still attached. The shifter is still in the car, so I gotta remove that shifter if I'm gonna pull the whole assembly out at once. The hood, also that needs to go so I can fit an engine hoist up in there to grab onto the engine and then drain all the fluids. So I still need to drain all the oil out and the transmission fluid and get all that ready to go. So uh, that's the goal for today is to dra drain the engine, drain the transmission, and uh, probably remove the hood. And then just all the little tiny things that I kind of missed, I need to go ahead and undo, take care of those pieces in there I talked about earlier that I haven't undone yet. And then I think I'm at a pretty good spot to stop. One of the main reasons why I'm stopping here is because I need to find or purchase or borrow an engine hoist since I've never really done this before. So uh, I still got to do all that. And yeah, so I just think this would be a pretty good place to stop. Now, uh, I don't want to end the video here because I still have a whole bunch of goodies for that engine right there. Uh, and I want to do an unboxing here at the end and kind of show you what I've got and hopefully this will answer a whole bunch of questions that you all have had about the um, kind of the idea that I had or what is the what is the path I'm going to take with this engine. So uh, anyway, I've got a whole bunch of cool stuff to show you. As soon as we're done with this, we'll hop into unboxing and uh, then we'll go ahead and end this video. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so as you can see, we got a whole bunch of packages that I have not opened and hopefully 
opening all this stuff, you're gonna kind of see what I'm gonna be doing to this engine back behind me. Uh, it's gonna give away, especially this box right here, and this T3 box is gonna give away a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of secrets on this build. All right, so let's go ahead and start opening. I'm gonna start with some of the basic stuff, which is like the mounts and everything to make this engine rear wheel drive applicable. So yeah, we'll start with that first and then I'll start getting into the goodies. Uh, maybe kind of zoom in on those a little bit more. All right, so this is going to be the water outlet or inlet on the back of the block. I'll show you where this goes a little bit later on. It's super grimy and looks like crap. Can't believe I paid the price I did for it. But the rear wheel drive components are getting harder and harder to come by. So when you find them online and they're available, uh, you almost just gotta get them. This bad boy up. It's like Christmas for car guys. I know all of you all know what I'm talking about. All right. This is pretty basic. Uh, these are just motor mounts to put the 4AGE in the Corolla. Looks like it came with OEM mounts as well, and they don't look to be in too bad a shape, so maybe I can use them. Anyway, let's open this one. I don't, I don't know what this is. All right, what is this? Ah, yes. So this is the other water inlet or outlet, I'm not really exactly sure, but it's the piece that is on the front of the engine. Oh, and it looks like it came with a bypass hose too, which is kind of cool. Uh, even though I did order one of those, we'll get to that, but need this for rear drive conversion, or at least the way that I want to go. So found this on eBay, picked it up for an okay price. Again, a little bit pricey given the age and condition, but the rear drive components again are getting harder to come by. So we got that. This right here, we'll open this real quick. This is the bypass hose. Came with some O-rings and then the OEM bypass hose. This is going to go from that piece that I just showed you to the rear wheel drive water pump, which we will open up next. Let's see, that one is, oh, that one's still inside. Hold on, let me go grab that real quick. This is one of the better boxes. So I got this from, you probably shouldn't see the address there, uh, Battle Garage, and this is a couple of components for the rear wheel drive conversion, as is all of this stuff. I don't know why I keep saying it. By the way, Battle Garage, they're awesome. So pretty good prices, actually really good prices, and uh, crazy fast shipping. I got this thing super quick. So uh, if anybody is looking for some OEM Toyota parts, I definitely suggest hitting up Battle Garage. I really hope they gave me a couple stickers so I can rep it on the uh, Corolla once it's done. And it looks like they did, sweet. So we got some Battle Garage stickers. Back here, these are cam seals. I got all my all the stuff that I got there. I believe these are cam, yeah, camshaft seals, OEM. I wanna go ahead and replace it. They seem to be pretty easy and might as well do it since I'm gonna be replacing the valve cover anyway, or not the valve cover, but the valve cover gasket. We got a OEM timing belt for a 16 valve. This is, I believe, a spigot bearing for the Transmission input shaft. Yup. Oh no, 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 no. This is the uh, this is the tensioner, timing belt tensioner for the 16 valve. Had to get one of those because mine's super shot over there. That's cool. Uh, oh yeah. Okay, so I won't open. Well, we're doing an unboxing. I might as well open it all. So this is a spigot bearing, uh, a lot smaller than I thought, but I will need that for the input shaft. This is a seal of some sort. Kind of forget what this is. Maybe it goes around this, maybe. I don't know. And then this is a rear, rear main seal. Uh, might as well replace it since I'm doing a little bit of work to the car. Again, I'm not going crazy in depth into rebuilding the engine yet, but a lot of this basic maintenance stuff, I think is just a good idea to do since I have the engine out of the car. But I figure I might as well do some of this while I'm at it. And this right here, is all right we got some gaskets awesome this is a full housing rear wheel drive water pump awesome everything looks really good here and i had to get the full housing because again mine's super grimy and that's a front wheel drive water pump so awesome glad i got that all right next up 
Oh, 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 yes. Boom, alternator bracket. And of course, and this is the rear wheel drive bracket to mount the alternator to. So this goes somewhere like that. The alternator sits on there and you can tension it up with this. All right, next. This is a Ford coil pack. And with this, these are just AutoZone branded, AutoZone brand uh, spark plugs. But they fit on this coil pack. So, that might give a little bit away as well. Let's open ah, this next. Oh yeah, this is ooh, a starter from an AE92. Still has a heat shield, so I hope it's still in good shape. It did come off of a working car, and I hear that this style of this style of style of starter is a little bit better because it has more cranking power, I believe, or something like that. This should work up, should bolt straight up to the T50 bell housing because uh, I do have a GTS bell housing. And this motor is from an 8092, so it should work. I hope. <laughs> All right, now for the good stuff. T3, awesome place. If anybody is an A86 car guy, you all know T3 makes some pretty awesome things for the Corolla. Got some Techno Toy Tuning stickers, sweet. Oh yes. All right, so the first thing that we have here this, I believe, is the water pump pulley. So I went with a gold, I guess, color scheme because I think it'll look pretty cool with the engine. I don't really know what I'm gonna do painting-wise. I might keep it kind of the stock color because I think it's kind of cool and old school. But I think these little hints of gold uh, will look really cool on the engine. So there's one piece. This is another piece. I already know what this is. We'll wait until I open the rest. <gasps> this guy. Right here is for the alternator, a little gold alternator pulley. I will need that. I actually still need an alternator now that I think about it. Huh. I did actually get one with this engine, but I don't know if that will work with rear wheel drive setup at the alternator will. If it will, let me know. I may just use that one. But yeah, anybody in the comments section, if you know if an A92 alternator will work on a rear wheel drive setup, put it in the comments below. Let me know because I still need to get one. And then some of you all probably know which one this is. All right, this is a single row crank pulley. I'm going single row because I am not going to be running power steering and I'm not gonna be running AC. Mainly to kind of simplify everything since this is my first engine swap, but that gets rid of a whole bunch of stuff and uh, you need to have a dual crank pulley in order for I think to run power steering, if I'm not mistaken, one of the two. But I decided to go ahead and just do single row for right now. I don't want to have power steering and I don't want to have AC. My AC never worked in this car, as I mentioned before, I think. Uh, so I don't really need it. I didn't ever really need it. And uh, power steering, I hear a manual swap, manual rack swap is a pretty cool performance mod that you can do to this car. And everybody seems to like it. So. For some reason, it's got BT on the back. I don't know if that means blacktop. I sure hope not. So with this is this piece, a trigger wheel. So this trigger wheel is going to screw on to the back of this pulley. And I am going to use this to, well, this in conjunction with the coil pack and the spark plugs that I showed earlier. This is how I am going to uh, I guess you could say figure out ignition, I guess, because I am getting rid of the distributor. So I'm sure all of y'all know what's going on now. Boy, this uh, came a long way. So before I open this, there's a guy on YouTube. His channel name is Driving for Answers, and he is making this build possible. So with these particular components that he has in here, I'm actually able to run what is in this box and he pretty much makes this himself. He has his own CNC machine, and he made these parts for me, which is pretty cool, and you can get them on his website. I'll put a link in the description below, but I believe it's drivingforanswers.com. He has a shop where you can pick up some really cool stuff. 
In here we have a bracket. And what's going to sit in this bracket is a part that I don't know where I put it. Well, there's a crank position sensor that is going to sit inside of here. It's somewhere inside. Uh, and this is going to bolt up to the bottom of my engine. And then the crank position sensor is going to sit in here. And then as this crank rotates, it's going to pick up the splines on the, uh, on the trigger wheel. And that is going to send a signal to this bad boy. Oh, wait, I'm not done yet. This is pretty sweet. This is something that he also makes. It is a delete plug for the distributor when you run a coil pack. And I decided to get D4A etched on it. Uh, you can get these plain. You can also get, I believe, a Toyota emblem or something written on there for Toyota. But I decided to go D4A because a lot of this build is gonna be based off what he did on his 4A GE MR2 build. So again, if you all have not seen his channel, please take a moment. Go check out D4A or Driving for Answers. Check out his YouTube channel. I will put a link in the description. I'll probably flash something up here too uh, so you can see his channel. But man, he this guy knows a lot about the 4A GE engine. He's done pretty much everything you can think of. Uh, he's very knowledgeable. And uh, if you're watching this video, I really appreciate all your videos. Please keep them up. They helped me out. They inspired me to get out here and do this particular project on my engine. And guys, uh, if you all want to get inspired, I want you to go over to his channel and watch his stuff too, because you definitely will. Uh, but I'll be repping that D4A with pride, and I will probably polish this up to make it look like a mirror finish. I think that'd be kind of cool. But uh, this, again, is going to plug the hole where the distributor used to be. And then this is the other piece that he machined that is going to hold the crank position sensor. So now that we got all of that open, we are going to move on to the... This is a crank position sensor. Uh, this is gonna go in that bracket. I'm not gonna take it out of the box because it's just a sensor. Uh, I think you all know what that is. All right, and now this box. I'm gonna take you all a little bit closer and do this closer up so you can see the goodness that's in this box. All right. So in this box is awesomeness. And this is from Dan ST. I'm sure some of you all know who he is and what he does for the 86 community and old Toyota community in general. He makes a really cool kit for a particular conversion. And that is what is inside this. Okay, didn't cut that well. All right. So I am running. Notice, uh, this is a 3D ignition management system. If you watch Driving for A's videos, this is actually what he uses as well. This is going to make me run what's in here uh, a lot easier, and I'm gonna be able to run that coil pack with the crank sensor and all that stuff to get my uh, ignition correct. So this is what I'm going with. A lot of people who do this sort of swap go with like a 6AL. Uh, I, I forget the name off the top of my head. I'll flash it on the screen there. Uh, but it pretty much does the same thing. Uh, this is just a different uh, company, and I think this will work for me. This comes with a wiring harness as well, so it's gonna make that uh, all plug and play. Oh, losing battery. Hold on. All right, we're back with a new battery. Here's some couplers. And in here is... Here they are. So here are motorcycle carburetors, and this is what I'm gonna be running on the 4AGE. Uh, this is gonna get rid of a lot of electronic fuel injection components, and it's gonna make things a lot more simple. And it all is also gonna look absolutely super cool. So we're gonna try to mount this up here in just a little bit, but this is what I'm gonna be running on my car, and I'm super excited about this. I need to look and see what kind of carbs they are. They could have been from a couple of different motorcycles, but Dan ST, he basically sources these carbs, cleans them, kind of rebuilds and refreshes them, uh, and then tests them to make sure that they flow properly. I can actually, uh, I can actually smell gas on it, so you know they were run somewhat recently, uh, and everything should be cool here. So in conjunction with this, he also sent uh, 
He also sent a manifold. Man, the quality of these welds, dude. This is awesome. This is so much better than anything that I could have done. This is aluminum. It looks super good. Very high quality manifold here for the carbs. Just like that with the couplers. And he custom built this one for a small port intake, which is awesome. So I don't have to run a T3 adapter or anything like that. But this is going to allow me to run these carburetors on my 4A GE engine. So let's go ahead and assemble this and then put it on the engine just so we can kind of see what it looks like. That'll be the next scene coming up right about now. All right, guys, there she is with the carbs installed on the 4A GE using that awesome manifold, uh, which was made for this small port engine from Dan ST. The manifold fit up just perfect. You can see I've got two studs uh, with a nut on each side, kind of just holding it in place right now. It's not really tight, but everything lined up great. These couplers were a little hard to get on, but uh, after you worked with them for a little bit, it was easy enough to get them on. So. Oh, this is so cool. Literally, this is all you're going to see in the engine bay. Oh, it's going to look so good. All right, guys. So that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know this one's going to be a little bit on the longer side with the whole unboxing, uh, but I did have to unbox quite a few things for this engine. And so the next video, I can actually install everything on here. Also, the engine itself, uh, we still got a little bit to do on the engine. Mostly everything is done, but uh, everything is done. You can actually see down here the drive shaft is out and everything. Transmissions drained, engines drained, and we're getting really close to getting this engine out of the car. If you like this sort of content and want to see more, make sure to press the subscribe button below and tick that bell notification to be notified when I post new content to this channel. Now, I don't know about you all, but I am itching to get into this engine and replace all the parts that I just ordered. And more importantly, I also am really looking forward to pulling this engine. So hopefully in the next video or two, one or two videos, we'll be pulling the engine completely out of this car uh, and we'll also be working on this engine and getting everything replaced and ready to be dropped in to the car. Guys, stay tuned for more A86 content and now more content on this soon to be bike carb 4AGE. I'm super excited, woo! And until next time, I'll see you later.